Round the Bend was a satirical comedy magazine show, which was a parody of existing magazine shows at the time. It featured Doc Croc, as we know now, who would introduce these extra segments with the help and sometimes hindrance of his rodent sewer-dwelling companions. Here's the man himself, of course, Doc Croc, our host. He was puppeteered by Anthony Asbury and Kevin Bradshaw, with that brilliant voice provided by N. Reitel. This one's Jemima Wellington Green. She was a rat reporter, puppeteered by Richard Coombs and voiced by Kate Robbins, obviously a bit of a parody of uh, Janet Street Porter. Vince Vermin, he was the vaudevillian cockney entertainer who would tell us awful jokes, often being interrupted and dragged off stage by Croc. John Glover was the voice for this character, with the puppeteer being Nigel Plaskett. And how about this chap? Lucetti Bruschetti an Italian rat who is a great artist, or so he says. Lucetti Bruschetti, of course, can be shortened to Lou Brush. Lou was performed by Alistair Fullerton, initially that is, later on it was by Simon Buckley, and his voice came courtesy of Jonathan Kidd. There were a few other characters as well, namely the talking heads that I've got up there behind me, of course. Doc Croc wasn't one of those talking heads. I think the one where I've got Doc Croc was a, a Scottish Terrier or something like that. And if you're thinking that these puppets have a bit of a spitting image vibe to them, well, you're absolutely right. The puppets were created by the same team who created the spitting image puppets. I mean, the heads on the wall, they look most like the spitting image ones, of course. Not so much the rodent ones, because their design is very different anyway, but D Doc Croc's definitely got that sort of spitting image vibe about him. Now, I don't remember this at all, but there used to be, apparently, a comic or magazine for kids, and it was called Oink. Anybody remember it? It was a sort of kid's version of Viz, really, uh, full of toilet jokes and violence and bits and pieces like that. Now, I don't remember having ever read it myself. I might have done, I just, I just can't remember. But apparently, researching it online, it caused quite an uproar among parents at the time. Apparently, there was a computer game as well, made of oink. You might have played it on the Commodore 64, the Amstrad CPC, or the ZX Spectrum. Oink apparently had a run of 68 issues before it was pulled from shelves. And at that time, Oink's creators, Patrick Gallagher, Tony Husband, and Mark Rogers, were offered a TV deal. And that is when they created the show they said couldn't be made about the magazine they said shouldn't be made. Round the bend, and with a fresh new bundle of characters to boot. Ahem. Okay then, let's have a look at some of them there, shall we? And those new characters included a raft of creations in skits and sketches where the rest of the characters lurked. See how many of these you can remember. The Odd Bods was a cartoon about a family of people with unusual physical attributes. Bouncing Benny, for example, used to bounce around everywhere on his backside. Loud Lucy would say incredibly embarrassing things in a very loud voice in public. And there was also a character called Nancy Nose, who, you guessed it, had a massive nose. I think they had an uncle called Invisible Ian as well. If anybody can confirm that, please let me know. Now safely back to Earth. <laughs> Does, uh, does anybody want to buy a cat? What's that? Oh, no, no, no. The original series was made for kids. This video isn't. Yes, goodbye. <laughs> Damn, cut the law. Getting in the way again. Right, what's next? Kenny McTickle and his magic kilt was about a wee Scottish-ish lad who could produce anything from under his magic kilt for any situation, including, at one stage, a fully functioning Jason Donovan. Here we go. Ah! Oh! Oh! Yeah! Oh! 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 Never you mind, laddie. And without further ado, let's have the next bit. John Potato's news round. That was brilliant. It was a Mr Potato Head-esque presenter who would give us the latest news, often passing over to John Colmole for weather or sports or location shots then assault you and steal your jacket. This highly dangerous criminal is known as the Mad Masher. All potatoes are urged to keep their eyes peeled. That was a special message for all you vegetables out there. Right, now, can you guess what's coming up next? We Man and the Masters of the Looniverse <laughs> was obviously a He-Man parody featuring the titular We Man and his arch-enemy, Skeleton Face. 
they'd have some very pedestrian adventures in a very non-pedestrian sort Stop of way. That. Who? I too have brought powerful friends. Meet my cousin, Sheep Ra, the Woolly Wonder. <laughs> Three heads are better than one, so I have enlisted Sir Bonsalot. I want to be on Wee Man's side. No, you don't. Is it now? Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, right. Okay, yes. Fine. No, no, I understand. Yeah. Okay, bye. I have to stop doing the voice. False Teeth from Beyond the Stars. This is the one I probably remember most of all. A parody on old B-movies about aliens. A sinister alien craft lands on Earth and all the false teeth in Britain gain a mind of their own. Converging on the landing site and then being mutated into alien tooth beings. Humans out! Take in! Humans out! Take in! Humans out! Take in! Will the menacing molars munch their way to supremacy? Will Head Teeth lead his well-drilled truth to victory? Find out in the next incisive episode of False Teeth from Beyond the Stars, next week on Round the Bend. Now, there's so much to cover here that I couldn't possibly mention each and every skit and sketch that was featured on the show. I mean, this video would just be way too long. But in addition to those already mentioned, I want to remind you of some that came to my mind straight away. What about Psycho the Magnificent? A frankly criminal magician who would use his powers for nefarious purposes, usually ending getting up caught by the police after a chase. And the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles got a fair old drubbing from the show's writers in the form of Teenage Mutant Ninja Toilets. And then again, in old age useless nitwit tortoises. I wonder if they had something against the heroes in a half shell. Now some of these interludes were made by Catalyst Pictures, some of the animations, and they're still about, they're still doing sort of mobile gaming and things like that. Quite a lot of services actually on their website if you have a look at it. And Ardman Animations did some of the other ones, notably the uh, False Teeth from Beyond the Stars for example. And in addition to those skits, there was usually a sort of music video parody, if you remember that. I seem to remember there was uh, Swill Collins, Kylie Manure, and of course Dross. I've just remembered another character actually, another one that you might remember, it was a bit terrifying. Do you remember the killer teddy bear? I've just seen a sign saying these toys can be <laughs> dangerous. <laughs> well, let's see what they are then, shall we, Vincent May son? Oh, look at this. A fluffy white teddy bear. Oh, yes, very dangerous, this Vince is. Very dangerous, about as dangerous as a... <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, I don't want to run into him or his dad. Let's get out of this smelly sewer for now. I mean, it was fun looking back, but uh, yeah, I'm a bit frightened now, to be honest. I don't want to bump into either of those guys. Let's go. Now, I mentioned Mary Whitehouse wanting to ban Round the Bend at the beginning of the video, and I've searched the internet for some solid evidence of that, which I can't really find, if I'm honest with you. A lot of places say she was against the violence and the toilet humour and so on, but I can't find any solid proof of that being the case. But what I can find is evidence of some interaction between Mary Whitehouse and Oink magazine. And this is from the website Toonhound. In that magazine, Oink, there was a character called Mary Lighthouse, who of course was a parody of Mary Whitehouse. And through that character, the creators would, you know, take the mickey out of these conservative-led campaigns to get rid of filth and horrors from TV screens. Now, you know, funnily enough, as it turns out, Mary Whitehouse did end up leading a campaign in the form of a letter writing campaign by parents to have Oink not removed from the shelves, but it was moved from the bottom shelves where kids could find and see it. And it was put high up on the top shelves, which meant, of course, nobody could see it anymore. Nobody could buy it anymore. At least the target audience, that is. The article specifically references W.H. Smith's in this. So I don't know if Smith's was the only outlet for the magazine, I'm not sure. If you do know a bit more about this, just let me know in the comments. Now then, Jonathan Kidd, who did the voice for Lucetti Braschetti, he was the voiceover for this Ferrero Rocher advert. The ambassador's receptions are noted in society for their host's exquisite taste that captivates his guests. And do you remember the Vicks Vaporub advert? 
Of course you can, Malcolm. Do you remember that? Well, Malcolm is played by Nigel Plaskett, who is the puppeteer for Vermin Vaudevillian Vince. Oh, Malcolm, I can't go dancing with my nose all blocked. Of course you can, Brenda. Try this. Six Sidex nasal spray. Works really fast. You might remember N. Reitel from a number of things. He's Doc Croc's voice. Here he is in Whose Line Is It Anyway? many, many years ago. Ba, ba, black sheep, have you any wool? <laughs> yes, sir, yes, sir. I said three bags full. I said three bags full. Get on down, baby. Kate Robbins, of course, is going to be instantly recognisable as the voice of Fergie and pretty much almost every other female voice in Spitting Image. But did you know that she wrote the original Surprise Surprise theme tune? I was surprised, surprised. Well, there you have it. Round the bend. A bonkers barmy. Brilliant programme for bonkers, barmy, brilliant kids like you and me. If you want to see a quick five minute video about some other things that Mary and Whitehouse wanted to ban, stick around just a few minutes more. I'll give you a link, it takes you straight there. You'll be able to just click it on screen. Same if you want to have a look at a quick video about some other puppets that you'll remember from your childhood. Thanks ever so much for watching today. If you haven't subscribed just yet, please do so today. We're a very small drop in a very large ocean and every subscription and view and like, it really does help the channel to grow. Thanks again for watching. Hang about for them two videos I mentioned and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.